Hello, and welcome again to another armor tutorial in ZBrush. Real quick, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and be sure to like this video to help my channel out. We are going to jump right into some advanced armor making in ZBrush. If you haven't had a chance to go back and watch the last video I made on making armor, I suggest going back and checking out that video because there are some really good methods in there that we'll probably end up using in this video as well. The first thing we need is a base mesh of some sort. If you don't already have a base mesh like I do here, you can go up to the light box, go to project, and select a base mesh that ZBrush has provided for you. The first thing we're going to do is we need to go to append. So go to subtool, scroll down, go to append, and append in any basic object. In this case, I'll do a sphere. Now if we select our sphere and go into solo mode, we need to scroll down, go to initialize, and we want to change our X, Y, and Z res to four. And now if I hit Q cube, it creates a little poly cube. If we turn on our line fill, we can see that it's created a four by four poly cube. If we snap to front view, hold control, alt, and shift, drag out our red box and hide everything on the bottom so that just the top face is left, we can go into geometry, modify topology, and select delete hidden. Now we just have this little polyplane left with four by four squares. Now that we have our polyplane, we're going to press W on our keyboard and move our plane into position over the character's shoulder. And I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. Notice that there's no bottom side to this geometry, but that's exactly what we want. Now that I have my plane in place, I'm going to click on the gear icon, go to bend arc, and these green arrows are going to manipulate the axes that I want. So I'm going to use this to bend this around the shape of my shoulder. Now we'll use the bend arc on a different axis to make this shaped a little bit more like the shoulder and then press W to go back into our move gizmo and move it into place. Now we can scale on a certain axis. Okay, now we have this simple geometry which is perfect for using our Z modeler brush. Go into your brush palette, find Z modeler and we'll get started. For the rest of this video, we will be using Z Modeler quite a bit. If you don't already know how to use Z Modeler, you can go back and check out my video on that, Learning Z Modeler in 5 Minutes. It's a very quick video and it'll show you all the basics and get you up to speed so you can follow along. So now we're going to hover over an edge, hold space, select Extrude, and select Edge Loop. So I can actually use this to create additional geometry to my armor plate. The thing you want to be careful of here is creating too much geometry. You want your planes to be as low poly as possible. Now that we have this in the basic shape that we want, I want this edge here to curve upward. So I'm going to mask everything by holding control and clicking outside my object. And then I will hold control and alt and I'll unmask just this section of polygons here. Now if I hit W on my keyboard, I can go to unmask my center and just use my gizmo to move those points up. Now I'll take my move brush, change my radius to be a little smaller, and just move these points around individually. Now if we go back to our Z modeler brush, unmask everything, I can hover over an edge, hold space, select extrude, mesh border. With mesh border, it's going to extrude everything around the outside of my object. Now what we're going to do is we'll hover over a polygon face, hold space, select mask, and poly loop. Make sure that it's pointing the direction of the poly loop you want and click on that. Now if we press Control w on our keyboard, it'll create a poly group. If you want, you can hover over an edge, hold space, select extrude and edge slash edge loop, and it will just pull out a single edge at a time. And if you do the edge next to it, you can snap them together by pulling them out. Once we get the armor in the shape that we want, we can go back to our Z modeler brush, hover over a polygon face, hold space, select Q mesh, all polygons. And if we drag this out, it will create some thickness and create additional geometry on the back. Remember, you only wanna do this once you're ready to move on to the next stage. So take as much time as you need in the first stage when there's absolutely no thickness to get this in the exact shape that you want. When we used Q mesh, it created this nice poly loop around the edge. If we hold space and change all polygons to poly group island, you can either pull out this edge around the edge of your entire object, or if you don't want to expand the size, you can click and drag, hold shift, and it will allow you to shrink the polygon border. And then you can drag and pull this out again, and it creates an additional poly loop that you can then grab and pull forward. Another useful tip with Z Modeler is you can inset faces. So if you hold Alt and click on any polygon, it will change its color. You can also click and drag to select multiple polygons. Now if you hover over a polygon face, hold space, and select Inset Poly Group All, when you click on that face, it's going to inset the geometry. Now here I'm having problems, which means that my geometry isn't even or there might be something wrong with the stuff on the back. So you can either delete this edge or if it's giving you trouble, try redrawing your poly group and try again. Insetting faces is a great way to get some nice geometry. Then you can use Q Mesh, pull that poly group up and create even more complex shapes. Once you've finished detailing your armor with Z Modeler, you can hit Control D to create a subdivision level. Remember that subdivision levels don't work with Z Modeler, so be sure that your armor is exactly the way that you want it before hitting Control D. And you can hit Control D a couple of times to make your geometry even higher. Now you can go in with your standard brush and start carving in some details on your armor. 
So that is one method of creating armor, and I'm going to show you a bonus tip for creating even better pieces. So this character, the arm is actually separated from the rest of the body. So I'm going to go into Subtool and duplicate my arms first so that I have a backup in case I mess something up. First, we need to turn on our poly frame button so that we can see our geometry. Then if you hold Control and Shift, click on your brush here and select Slice Curve. With Slice Curve selected, hold Control and Shift to start to draw. And if you tap Alt twice, it creates a nice sharp corner. So you can use this to draw really nice, precise shapes on your mesh. Once you connect, it'll draw a poly group. And you can isolate the group by holding Control and Shift, clicking on it, masking, hold Control and Shift and click to show everything else. Go to Subtool, go to Split, and Split Masked Points. Now that this is its own subtool, what you have to do is go to Geometry, Edge Loop, and click on Group Loops. When you click on Group Loops, it's going to smooth everything out and tighten up the edges for you. If it tightens everything up too much, you can also drag down G Polish a little bit lower, and it will retain its shape a little bit better. Once you've hit Group Loops, you want to go down to Deformation, and at the top of the Deformation menu is Polish by Features. Drag that slider over to the right at least one or two times, and what it's doing is tightening up the poly borders for my poly loops. Now if I go to Z Remesher, make sure half is turned on, it will clean up my geometry really, really nice. Then we can go back to Edge Loop and hit Group Loops one more time, and it'll create another poly border around the top of the object. From here, I can take my Z Modeler, hover over an edge, hit Extrude, Edge Loop, and pull in the Edge Loop at the top. And same thing, I can do this at the bottom, grab the Edge Loop, pull it in at the bottom. Now you have a nice little border around the edges of your object. If you go back to your normal view and it looks too small, you can hit W on your keyboard and just scale up your mesh a little bit. Now that we have this in the shape that we want it, we can slice out additional poly groups by holding Control and Shift and using our Slice Curve Brush again to cut out new shapes. If you're using Slice Curve, be sure to do it on the left side of your mesh because then you can go into Geometry, Modify Topology, and hit Mirror and Weld, and it will weld it to the other side as well. If you're doing it on the right side, it won't allow you to do it. So be sure that you're working on the left. Now that I've cut out another shape, I can go back to Deformation, and at the top, hit Polish by Features again, and it will just tighten up my poly group borders. If I hold Control and Shift and click on this poly group, I can scale it up in size and show everything, and you can see that it's actually pushed all of that out and made a nice looking border, but it's still not perfect. So if you want to clean this up even further, go back to your Z Modeler brush, hover over a face here, hold space, select Mask, Poly Loop, and make sure that your cursor is pointing in the direction of that poly loop to mask it. Hold Control, press W, and it creates a nice poly group on that border. Now we'll do the same thing on the bottom. Make sure that it's pointing in the right direction, mask that edge loop, hold Control, press W, and it creates a poly group. Now if we hit Polish by Features, this is going to tighten up our edge loops. You can already start to see how this is starting to look more like armor. The only thing you have to be careful of is the Slice Curve brush can throw in little loops like this sometimes, so be careful that you don't get these random selections based on the direction of your mouse. Because I didn't spot this earlier on, I'm actually going to have to go back and fix it before I can continue on with this. Otherwise, I would have to reconstruct this geometry, which I really don't feel like doing. Once you have your geometry the way that you want it, hover over a space, select Q Mesh, All Polygons, and just create some thickness for your mesh. Now you can hit Control D a couple of times to get some geometry in there, grab a brush, and start sculpting on it. That is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that this was helpful. If you liked this video, please leave me a thumbs up and a comment down below to help my channel out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to find out when I come out with new stuff. And until next time...